Salutations, respected viewers. This is George from Ireland, and I get to tell you about uh, the upper class British accent, which is one which I more or less speak with. Uh, not that I'm upper class, I always like to give this health warning. Uh, I'm working class, really, but I just ended up speaking this way. Um, so forgive me for my distinctly uh, not upper class clothing. I hope it doesn't spoil the whole effect. Ironic, no? Uh, so, well, what is it? Um, well, there's a clue in the name. So people who were aristocratic would speak this way, people who are definitely not, like me, if they'd been to certain schools often ended up speaking this, this way. Um, this accent was most commonly found in southeastern England, but it can be found throughout the British Isles. It's just rarer in certain places. Um, and uh, it's just only a small minority of people um, speak this way, and I have a mild version of it. There are some people with um, very plummy accents indeed. Um, you notice the royal family, their accents are actually not off the scale, as you might think, partly because they've got nothing to prove. There's some over-protestation from people who are perhaps less secure in their socio-economic position, who uh, maybe try a little too hard. Um, uh, are these fake accents in some cases? Possibly. But uh, what would seem um, risible these days would have been perfectly genuine 50 years ago. Um, so it's a, it's a non-rotic accent, that's to say that the letter R, R, um, is not pronounced unless it's word initial, like Red Rover. Like Rover, you notice the, the second R, I'm emphasizing it there, doing American style, doesn't sound like an R, it sounds like a vowel. Um, so we, we, we circumcise R's off the end of words, or even in the middle quite a lot of the time. Uh, okay, an example, because the House of Windsor speaks like this. You hear Windsor, and a lot of talk about Windsor Castle, St. George's Chapel. You notice the, in the middle of George, it sounds more like a W, not an R. If I was to pronounce the R as an R in George, I would say George. Maybe I'm doing it a bit too much. I find it difficult to gauge, to pronounce it properly without overdoing it. George. Was that an R? Um, well, the British royal family that the House of Windsor used to be Saxe, Coburg, Gotha till 1917 really should be von Schleswig, Holstein, von Sonderburg, Burg and Glucksburg because of the Queen's husband, Prince Philip, that's his surname. Uh, so um, this upper class accent has its own slang and my goodness, I could go on about that Lexus all night. But here are some un unusual features, but you find them more broadly um, in British English, particularly accents that um, emanate from Southern England. One of these is toodaloo, which uh, is a loan word from French, where they're saying à tout à l'heure. And apparently this was picked up in the First World War to say goodbye, but at the French they're saying um, all on time, uh, but the, 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 the subtext is I'll see you soon. A tout à l'heure, and that came into British English as toodaloo, and that's an informal way of uh, saying farewell. Um, cheerio, which is another goodbye, I suppose. Plonk, to mean wine, because uh, people heard the French saying du vin blanc. Um, I think it's something that started off amongst um, the other ranks, so um, enlisted men and then officers took it up, perhaps mockingly, because of course most army officers were conversant in French. If not fluent, they, they would have had a smattering of it. They would know what that means. Um, this is not a particularly upper class word. These are the, well, these are the foregoing, they're just uh, British ones generally. But I think more distinctly Southern English. You see even the word Southern, the R doesn't come out like that. Um, uh, okay, you're talking about planes. It's aeroplane. You can say plane is absolutely fine, but if you want to say the full word is aeroplane, Whereas in American, it's airplane, such as in that um, comedy film from about 1980, uh, starring nobody whom I can remember. Um, long vowels are very much the order of the day, such as the uh, slang way of saying yes is ja. Now, sounds like German, I suppose, but some people would really overdo it and say ja. But uh, that might be a bit old fashioned for the Sloan Rangers. The Sloan Square in London, and the late 70s, early 80s, it was a subculture, Sloan Rangers or Sloanies as they were known, were supposed to hang around Sloan Square um, and go down the King's Road. Princess Diana, I suppose, was the queen of the Sloan Rangers, but then she got married in 1981 and was kind of off the scene. Well, she wasn't that well known, was a shy die, was a retiring sort, 
not a party animal. So she was only 19 when she wed, but she would have been uh, an icon for them. But people of her social set and people who are a bit short in the grey matter, and they would have said, OK, yeah. And um, Sloan Square, you notice there's no R pronounced in square, for instance. And um, there are many more features like that. Well, again, this is old hat. This is going back 20 years, but Land Rover cars, calling them Landys for short. Um, so uh, there are many more things I could say about this, a lot more slang words. What would you like to know? What have I missed out? I have scratched the surface. So in briefest summary, it's an accident with a few um, unusual pronunciations and some uh, unusual words, social markers, the OK YAR being one of them. But um, that one, I'm a more moderate pronouncer of that.